Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all is well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I really do appreciate it. And these are my thoughts so far on the season and my thoughts on the future when it comes to the New York Knicks. The truth of the 2022-23 to Knicks so far. So I'm not saying they don't have a chance of turning or turning it around, but these are just my honest thoughts on this team now, moving forward when it comes to this regime. Tom Thibodeau, Leon Rose, Scott Perry, and all that. So I understand we don't have the worst record right now, but right now you can say we're playing at a very mediocre level. We have to be better, especially with the schedule that's coming up. Obviously, we just had an atrocious loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder. We play the Jazz next that were just very competitive with a talented group of the Philadelphia 76ers. Then we go on to play the Warriors in that stretch to play just very good basketball teams. I know we end up playing the Grizzlies again when it comes down to that stretch of games at the very end. Like We play a tough, brutal schedule. We play the Phoenix Suns. We play the Nuggets. We haven't beaten them in a while. So it's going to be some true tests for this Knicks team to see if they could overcome adversity. Because right now, we have not been a team that is 500 or better. The teams so far that we have beaten are the Philadelphia 76ers, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Detroit Pistons twice, the Orlando Magic, and then we also went on to beat the Charlotte Hornets. So we are 6-7 and seven so far this season. Again, I'm not saying this team can't improve, but these are just my true honest thoughts. And I'm going to be starting off with the coach of Tom Thibodeau. So I'm going to try to make this as respectful as possible. I know sometimes you guys see me rant about this, like no filter when it comes to live streams or videos. But at the end of the day, Tom Thibodeau is a human. This whole organization, they are humans and they understand what they are doing wrong. Well, some people may not understand what they're doing wrong. Some people may just be stubborn and stuck and stuck in their old ways or stuck in their ways. You know, we all know someone like that. But yeah, they're human. They know what they're doing wrong. But these are just my thoughts so far on these certain players or certain members of the organization. So starting off with Tom Thibodeau, we hired him and it was a dream hire for him. You know, it was a dream scenario for him. Like he grew up a Knicks fan. He was part of the Knicks coaching staff before when we had Van Gundy. He's been in the league for a very long time when it comes to coaching and he just loves the game of basketball. He eats, sleeps, like all of it when it comes to basketball. He's just in love with the sport. And what he did the first year was amazing. You know, he took a roster that we pretty much had the season prior and just excelled with it and just exceeded expectations. No one expected us to win over 40 games with that roster. No one expected us to be the fourth seed. The playoffs, I give him a pass when it comes to certain things. Like, yeah, sometimes like you're like, wait, he's not making adjustments offensively. Like, we're just treating Julius Randle like he's Carmelo Anthony out there when he's clearly not thriving like he was in the regular season when it comes to these isolation situations. But at the end of the day, we were the fourth seed. The Atlanta Hawks were the fifth seed. You can't say we overachieved because when it comes to playoff time, you need a star level player, and there was no one that played like an all star compared to the Atlanta Hawks. You had Trey Young that looked like a superstar all of postseason, and then you started to really see the reality. So we got to the playoffs for the first time in eight years. Like, I'm always going to remember that because it was a crazy season. You know, the virus was starting up, and there was no fans and all that. Tom Thibodeau, he set a culture. He got all these guys to play hard. We had Alfred Payne starting at the point guard position. We had Reggie Bullock, who I thought was extremely solid, but he's not a star. RJ took a leap and in a certain depart or in some departments of shooting the basketball defensively. Credit to RJ Barrett, but also credit to Tom Thibodeau for getting him to work hard and just adding on to his work ethic. We know RJ has his work ethic, but Tom Thibodeau always pushes guys to their max. And Randall had this amazing season, you know. When Mitchell Robinson went down, next man up mentality, Nerlens Noel thrived the rest of the season, you know. Derrick Rose, he's always been a baller, but, you know, he has that chemistry with a Tom Thibodeau. Obi came off the bench, quickly came off the bench. Like, that was all amazing, but there's been this th theme throughout Tom Thibodeau's career. Even, like, we saw with the Minnesota Timberwolves, he set the culture. He was good the first year, you know, and after that, it was a disaster. And it, it was the same thing with the New York Knicks because the thing with Tom Thibodeau, he's going to set the culture. He's going to get these guys to play hard defensively. But the NBA, like, the NBA adjusts to his offensive schemes. And the problem with his offensive schemes is there's not much movement. And it's not pure modern-day NBA. Like, it's just not good sets offensively. It's very predictable. And then the NBA adjusts and keys in on that. And notice how the offensive flow hasn't been as consistent. And you could say maybe we're improved offensively this season. 
But if you just see the way we get our shots, it's just not normal the way we get our shots. There's no consistent pace we're playing at. We're not consistently playing fast. We're not consistently playing slow in the half court setting. We're, we're going to have games that we move the ball. We're going to have games we don't move the ball. There's going to be games that we're in isolation situation. Ran, like Randall, Brunson, RJ, they all seem like their style of plays don't mesh together. And... I don't know if that's what we should blame on them all together as a unit and their chemistry should be better. Or should we blame Tom Thibodeau, the scheme and the system? Maybe if there was more movement and maybe if there was more structure, they would be put in the position to be successful more. So his defensive scheme as well. You could say after the first year, there was kind of an excuse like we brought in Fournier, which Leon Rose deserves some blame in that department. Like Leon Rose should just accept that I made a mistake. Like Fournier doesn't even start anymore and he straight up shouldn't even be playing off the bench. He's been that awful like this season. He's been atrocious. He's shooting 35% from three, averaging like eight, nine points per game. We know he's a turnstile defensively, but yeah, there's some blame to go to Leon Rose. That was not a good signing. You know, Bullock is Bullock's way better than Fournier when it comes to starting, and Fournier may have more pop scoring games, but you need you need a combination of offense and defense. It's a 3 and D league, and Fournier can get to that floater sometimes, but it's not on a consistent basis, and he doesn't get shots within the flow of the offense. He chucks up a lot of off-balance shots as well, so Fournier obviously didn't work out. You know, you don't have Alfred Payne anymore. That's an upgrade, at least when it comes to Kemba Walker at the point guard position, so I understand defensively there. But if you overall just take a look at this Knicks team, even this season, I know, yeah, there's no more Kemba, Brunson, I understand, it's undersized, but you even see it with Cam Reddish entering the starting lineup, who's a much better defender than Evan Fournier. RJ's been a solid defender. He started off very shaky, kind of fell off. He was better, he, was la- he wasn't he was that good in that Thunder game, which resulted in him, in him getting benched, only playing two minutes in that second half. But the reality is, throughout the game, or throughout the season, we've been 30th in the league when it comes to three-point defense. Or we've been 29th in the league when it comes to three-point defense. The Minnesota Timberwolves have been 30th, and I don't see how that's possible because we constantly leave guys open outside on the perimeter, and that has nothing to do with personnel. That has to do with communication. It has to do with the scheme, and it's been a decent amount of games through the season. Again, it hasn't been halfway a halfway point through the season, but you're telling me that like even 10 games or 12 games through the season, you don't know how to communicate like who should go over, over the screen and who should like go under the screen. Like... Just when there's switches, you can't communicate who to defend the perimeter. And I think that comes down to Tom Thibodeau's defensive scheme. I feel like he relies more on the interior defense and the help in the interior than the help outside on the perimeter. And I think Tom Thibodeau's defense is a little too risky that it's just like, yeah, he close out last second. I'm not a coach or anything like that, but that's what I'm looking at. I'm like, it can't just all be the players because it comes down to the coaches as well, making sure that they put a good product out there on the basketball court defensively, and he's just been bad, or they've been overall bad defensively. I know they're one of the top in the leagues when it comes to points allowed, that type of thing, but if you see the games we did win, though, like, it hasn't been against good teams. Like, respect to the Pistons, but they're figuring out how to win games. The Magic are figuring out how to win games. They're a young group. We played the Philadelphia 76ers when they had... No Embiid and no James Harden. You know, the Hornets are one of the worst teams in basketball right now. Like, the Timberwolves, they they were pretty bad when we played them, and they didn't have Ru- Rudy Gobert as well. I'm not trying to take credit away from them, but the defense has straight up been bad. Yes, it's eventually going to get better. It can't be worse, but we even saw it last season that he's not willing to make adjustments when it comes to his offensive scheme. And so, Tom Thibodeau, the honeymoon phase is over. It was awesome that he brought us to the playoffs for the first time in eight years. But there's way more that goes beyond than just, like, putting the guys in the position to play hard. It's utilizing guys the right way as well. We need a coach that can come in here and make adjustments when the game's going on. Make adjustments within the flow of the game. Like, it seems like he just has this paper, like, I'm going to put someone in during this time. No, if Randall's playing bad, if he's playing unacceptable, take him out of the game and put Obi in. Like, Randall shouldn't be pl- be played for the whole third quarter if he's been bad that entire third quarter, and then you finally put Obi in in that minute mark that you put him in, you know? Like, you gotta hold these guys accountable, you have to hold everyone accountable, everyone should be treated equally, and maybe you could say one of the reasons he babies Randall a little bit is because of what Randall did that season, even though it's not that season anymore, and Thibodeau needs to accept it, it's not second year Randall of what he did and brought us to the playoffs played like a freaking megastar. Like, it's the present. He's, he's a good talent, but he doesn't have it between the ears. He doesn't have it between the ears to consistently make the right basketball decision down the stretch of games. And you're not going to win many games 
when your best player or one of your best players plays good for three quarters but doesn't make the right decision when it matters consistently. Sometimes he'll hit a very nice fadeaway, make a solid pass, but then most of the time he makes a stupid decision with the ball or sometimes he falls short on a layup or he misses free throws or takes a bad three when we don't need it. There's certain things you could put on the coaching when it comes to bland offense, but then it's just like that's a straight up bad shot. Like someone was wide open on the perimeter. There was someone wide open inside in the dunker spot. You know, so we need a coach that's not afraid to try new things when they come in. And when they play the young guys, don't just play them. Put them in the position to be successful because that's the scary thing about Obi in a good way that Obi's making progression. He's our best three-point shooter on this roster right now, shooting 38% because we've been atrocious shooting the three ball. Brunson, yeah, Obi shooting 38%. Sorry if I said 31%. Maybe I didn't and I'm just overthinking. But Brunson shooting like 32% from three right now. RJ shooting like 20-something right now. Cam Reddish isn't shooting that well from three, like 31%. Randall's not shooting well from three. And obviously, Mitch is hurt, but Hornstein doesn't take a lot of them. And then you even take a look at Jericho Sims. He straight up doesn't take threes. He's a bad free throw shooter. So there's no spacing there. But Obi's made progression. Like, he's always had that feel for the game. He makes solid reads out there. But his three just looks automatic. We know how athletic he is. But the sad thing is, we shouldn't just be showcased his ability to shoot the ball from the outside. We should be showcased his entire skill set. When he's out there on the basketball floor, what he's great at, his athleticism, moving without the ball, he leaks out. He does move, but most of the time it looks like it's not within the design of the offense. It's just like Obi's like, oh, I'm good at moving, so I'm moving. You know what I mean? It's like most of the time it's him standing in the corner. Like Obi shouldn't be utilized that way. We're lucky that he's knocking down these threes of the season because I don't believe we're utilizing his skill set the right way. And it's going to be awesome if we bring in a coach that has a modern day NBA offense. Obi will thrive even more and you'll see the progression from Obi even more this season. But Tibbs can be stubborn when it comes to lack of adjustments. And the reality is the honeymoon's over. He'll set the culture. You know, you'll improve because your standards are set so low. Like the Timberwolves had this playoff drought. The Knicks had the playoff drought. The standards were set so low. So you make it to the playoffs. It's like a championship. But then the reality is the league adjusts to it. And there's not much moving forward. Like you might be stuck in the middle. You'll be mediocre. And that's one of the weirdest positions and one of the worst positions you could be in. That you're not getting high echelon talent. And the Knicks aren't attractive when it comes to free agency. And your main thing isn't just playing the guys that are going to be here moving forward, which he should be doing because Fournier is not going to be here moving forward. Randall's not going to be here moving forward, even though that is an interesting situation because you gave Randall this contract. So you kind of have no choice but to start him. And he's not so bad to the point that you bench him. But then at the same time, you took Obi with the eighth overall pick. It's just a weird situation when it comes to Randall. Like I'm a no excuses type of guy. But that is a weird situation. But Fournay straight up just shouldn't be getting minutes though coming off the bench. Like, what's the situation with Grimes? Like, that whole injury thing. Like, he has a sore foot. Like, if he really does have a sore foot. Like, he wasn't on the injury report, but he barely plays last night. Fournay plays 20, 20 minutes, doesn't do shit in those 20 minutes. Made one nice pass to Obi for the alley-oop dunk. But you're telling me Grimes couldn't get Fournay's minutes when RJ was benched in the second half? A guy that's actually going to be here moving forward? That kind of makes no sense to me. Really does not make sense to me. So the honeymoon phase is over. I really appreciate what Tom Thibodeau did. This was his dream job, but we need more. We need someone with modern day offensive sets that aren't afraid to try new things, develop the young guys, utilize them the right way, hold everyone accountable. I'm not saying to be this raw, raw type of guy, but also have the proper defensive sets and put their players in the best position to be successful. And yeah, Leon Rose, he deserves blame as well. I brought up the Fournier thing. That didn't work out. Derrick Rose, it's very early, but he does look kind. Of, he does look kind of washed, to, to be honest with you guys. And yeah, Kemba Walker obviously didn't work out. RJ Young, I understood why we gave RJ the contract. I know some people would have waited and played it out another season with RJ. And I'm not going to say it's this entire regime, and I'm not making excuses for RJ. RJ didn't play that well last game. I don't know if we should have benched him, though. I thought that was an odd move by Tom Thibodeau because there was guys that were playing bad as well that game. So I was I just didn't understand that move by Tom Thibodeau. So I do think RJ had the right to be frustrated, but also you have to be a professional at the same time. So I thought RJ was playing well those last few games before the game versus the Thunder. He was shooting it better. His defense was better. He was finishing better at the basket. Last game, though, this past game, he was atrocious defensively, turned the ball over, made stupid decisions when he was in the paint. But the reality with RJ, 
Also, like, I want to see what these guys do in a more structured offense. I really do. Like, RJ needs to be a more consistent shooter. Like, I'm tired of stretches. I want to see consistency. But then that also might just not be his game. Like, the shooting off the dribble, like, shooting jump shots off the dribble, that was maybe a little too much to ask when it came this offseason of seeing the progression there. Like, the, like he'll bust out that fadeaway jumper occasionally, but you'll never see him, like, if he shoots that step back three, it's short all the time. He doesn't create enough, like, elevation when it comes to his jumper to get it off without it being affected. You know, he's strong in the paint. He has a, he has a good work ethic, but it is year four at the same time. I'm not trying to limit him as anything, but is this truly what RJ is, or is there something more there that we need a modern-day coach? Like, RJ needs to be better, his handle needs to be better, but also, I want to see what he could do with an actual coach. Same thing with Obi, and maybe even the same thing with Randall. I don't want Randall here moving forward, because there's certain things that aren't coaching when it comes to his basketball IQ and decision making, because you just see Obi straight up has a better IQ. Yes, he'll have stupid turnovers at times, but I feel like he learns from it when it goes on. Randall doesn't really learn from it, if you know what I mean. Like, jumping on passes, and he's a veteran in this league. Like, he's a veteran in this league, Julius Randall. So he has a long way to go when it comes to to learning because he was drafted in the Andrew Wiggins draft. And what was the Andrew Wiggins draft? 2013, 2014, trying to think at the top of my head. But that was a good amount of time ago. Like I've always thought he has a talent, but it comes down to making the right decisions when it comes to out there on the basketball floor. But at the same time, we also have to think about this with Tom Thibodeau. It's a star-driven league. You do need stars to be successful. But just from the eyeball test of what you're watching when it comes to the offensive sets, when it comes to not making the right decisions, like when it comes to any game adjustments or straight up not doing it, like, yeah, there's some trouble there. Like, you even see Doc Rivers. Like, Doc Rivers has stars. Like, James Harden, Max, he plays like a star. You have Joel Embiid. Like, you have all these talented players, but you even see it. You could have stars but still make stupid, stupid decisions, and it affects your team. Like, Doc Rivers makes stupid adjustments. Or make stupid rotations. Sometimes you'll have Embiid out there with personnel that doesn't really fit his skill set. So a star doesn't always save the day. Even though it does help, but you're still limited. And you see that with Doc Rivers. And you see that with the Philadelphia 76ers even when they had Brett Brown as well. So in my opinion, the writing's on the wall. We need a coach that isn't afraid to try new things. Focused on the youth development. Modern offensive and defensive sets. And... When they have young guys, play them throughout their strengths. And you want a direction. You don't want another wash season because I'm really afraid this is going to be a wash season because Randall's not going to be here in a couple years or he shouldn't be here in a couple years. There'll be a, there's going to be a problem <laughs> if he's here in a couple years. Fournier's still here in a couple years. But I touch base on Randall. I really do believe when he's in the right head space, he's playing hard. I really do believe he cares. But it just comes down to his basketball IQ. I don't feel he has the feel for the game. To be one of the top options on a winning team. He is the talent. But the feel for the game isn't there. On a consistent basis at least. He, I do think he's an above average defender when locked in. But that's another thing. Like when locked in. And he's a smart player. When he's taking the right shots. Just sometimes he has to realize that shot isn't falling. I think he takes too many of those fadeaway jumpers. That three pointer from the outside. He should be attacking more. If he played more and he understood his limits and things that... Yeah, he may be a decent three-point shooter, but if he understood, like, I'm not to the point that I should be taking that many a game, yeah, I'll, it's acceptable. But I do think him having that all-star year really built him up so much confidence that he believes he's still that type of player, if, if you know what I mean, when, when it comes to Julius Randle. And that could have been the best and worst thing to happen to this team making the playoffs because, yeah, we built a culture. It was amazing. We made it to the playoffs for the first time in eight years and all that. But then it kind of tricked the organization into thinking we're, be- we're better than we really are by getting a Fournier, which m- the move was kind of interesting d- during the time. And then we went away from the youth and we kind of just rushed the process. So Leon Rose, again, deserves some blame there. And just, by the way, also like Taj Gibson, a guy that obviously wasn't even here, not here this season, got more minutes than Obi Toppin. The, re- the reality is this New York Knicks team needs to pick a direction. And there's only one direction. I know so many people are going to be like, I'm tired of rebuilding. I'm tired of blowing it up. Well, we're going to continue to blow it up. We're going to continue to go through coaches. If we don't find the right coach, it's not our problem. The fans, it's not the fans' problems we can't find the right coach. It's on the organization. They need to find the right coach. 
Like, we're going to continue to do this until we build it right. The New York Knicks haven't built it right. We always rush it. We always trade guys. We don't draft right. The Knicks would be in a better position if we didn't draft Kevin Knox. We would be in a better position if we didn't draft Frank Nilakina. You know, what if Porzingis didn't tear his ACL? Like, there's so many big what-ifs. What if we made the right selection? What if, what if we just did a better job on draft night? Because when you draft well... Like, you draft really well. Yeah, those guys are eventually stars if you put them in the position to be successful. The Knicks have been so bad for such a long time that we still don't even have a star. We could talk about RJ can be a star, but he's not it right now. Maybe you're like, yeah, if we have the right coach, he'll be a star, but we don't have that right now. Randall's a star for a year. We don't have a star on this roster. It's a star-driven league. The realistic lens right now is this team is mediocre, and there's only one way we could build this team right now, and it's through the draft. Like, we're going to continue to rebuild. We're going to continue to go through regimes until we build this thing right. Because we're mediocre right now. They remind me of the Magic from a couple years ago. We have solid players on the roster, but we don't have any stars right now to the point that I'm like, we're going to contend. The Magic, they would be this first round exit. They would make it to the first round, but then they probably realize why they blew it up. Like, oh, we're not good enough to compete, but we're not bad enough to get a top draft pick. I'm not saying to tank, but if we're going to lose games, lose games with the young players. If you're going to win games, win games with the young players. With Grimes, with Obi, move on from Randall, move on from Fournier. You know, you're. I don't know what the value is of those guys. I'm not a GM. I don't work in the NBA or anything like that. But the reality is the Knicks need to draft guys, make the right selection, do your due diligence, scout the right way come out with the right players and develop them and put them in the position to be successful. I'm not saying to like tear ever like get rid of everyone, but I want to see who RJ truly is. Like, yes, I'm not I'm not saying RJ will be a megastar or anything like that, but I want to see him in a modern offense. I want to see Obi in a modern offense. Like the system they play in literally makes no sense right now. It's time to move on from Tom Thibodeau. It's time to draft. It's time to develop Like, this team is a mess right now. I know it's early, but you can truly see it's just a mess. You're not going to win many games without a star. You look at the Pacers. They traded for Alaburn, a young player who's playing like a star. I'm not saying they're going to continue to win games this season, but they will in the future because Halliburton's young and he's a talented player. They drafted Benedict Matherin. He looks like a beast. He's young. He's a part of the future. It's not going to do your club anything if you play freaking Fournier over Grimes. Who knows if he's going to be here, though, because obviously Grimes needs to prove that he could stay healthy, but we know what Fournier is at this point. He's not a part of the future. Why is, like, one of the main reasons the Celtics are successful, yes, you could talk about coaching the overall organization, but they drafted well, and they nailed the obvious picks. You can't miss out when it comes to those te- those top five picks, you know? They nailed Jason Tatum. They obviously executed with Jalen Brown, which Jalen Brown was kind of an interesting pick during that time because he was a raw player coming out of Cal. I don't believe he had the craziest of numbers. He was taken for his physical profile, his mental makeup, and you see what they've done with him. They put him in the position to be successful, and he's really thriving. And if the New York Knicks are going to build it right, if you lose, you're going to lose with the guys that are going to be here moving forward. If you're going to win, you're going to win with guys that are going to be here moving forward. Let me know down below your thoughts. I do think veterans are still important. You have to have them there, but they shouldn't be your main focal point of building your team in the starting lineup, especially if they're established already. But thank you guys again so much for the great amount of support. Peace out, y'all.